my name is Ignacio Martí, for those of you that don't know me. And then I, I have a, I'm a head of the business here at DTU, but, um, but today I'm uh, here as um, the joint program for Wind Energy, the coordinator of the joint program for Wind Energy as part of the European Energy Research Alliance. And we have taken the initiative together with Tufe, Tufe, ah, you're there, and Jake to present uh, you this interesting project, New Wind Era. Uh, and activities around the joint program that we are um, developing these days, right? So the agenda that we have, we'll, I will give you an introduction on the joint program. Also, what are we doing? What is the joint program of wind energy? Some of you are very familiar, some of us maybe not. And the next step that we are taking, which is to transition this joint program into a European Center of Excellence. Then we will have Jake presenting the new wind era project and the uh, overall scope of the project. And then Tufe will present uh, the results that we have uh, up to now. And there will be a Q&A, right? So get ready with questions. All questions will be at the end, right? So if you also have any question on my part in the beginning or whatever, note it down and we will have all questions at the end. So um, yeah, my focus here is going to be uh, giving you an update on what this uh, European Energy Research Alliance is, the joint program for wind energy, and the next step, as I mentioned. So this joint program on wind, it is the biggest EU uh, collaboration around wind energy research. We have 46 organizations um, in um, many countries, 14 countries, um, and it's quite spread, as you can see there. Some of these organizations have been working in green energy for many, many years, like us, uh, and some others are newer. There are universities, there are uh, national labs. Uh, it's a kind of a broad scope there. And, um, and this was created, I think, around 2009, if I remember correctly, as an initiative by the European Commission. And it was created, the Research Alliance, and what is called now ETIP Win. It was at that time it was TP Win, the technology platform for wind energy. They were created at the same time, and it was the idea by the European Commission was to have somehow the voice of the industry in the ETIP Win technology platform and the voice of the research community in the research alliance. And and it has been like that uh, in the early days of this uh, initiative. There was a very, very close interaction uh, with the Commission. And there was a very strong connection between, let's say, our recommendations and the funding calls that the Commission were putting there. Over time, this has diluted a bit and it has evolved. And now it is it's also a much more complicated process to allocate funding into the calls in Europe and so on. But still, the mandate is, is that, that one, right? Um, if, if you, the difference, you could say, typically between industry, ETIP win, it is that of course, is the industry perspective, and they tend to be short term, short to medium term. When they say long term is five years, well, for us, five years is very short term. So they are looking in now and what is coming next. And then the research community is more medium to long term. And I will explain a little bit more about this. And what is clear also, it is uh, that there is, there is a need uh, for long term coordination and cooperation and on research on wind energy. It has been always the case, but you, if you think maybe now more than never, because there is a, everything is changing very quickly and there are lots of interests and things are moving. So actually making a strong case for wind energy is more important than ever. A little bit on the how we are organized. So we are organized in different sub programs. Um, and you see here the sub-program coordinators. These are the areas. Uh, so we organize our activities along uh, sub-program one. Peter Eason from TNO is coordinating, and this is planning and outreach. Sub-program two is research infrastructure. Paul McKeever from uh, UK is coordinating. Sub-program three, Jake Badger on wind conditions. Sub-program four, Antonio from Spain uh, is on aerodynamics and loads and control. Subprogram five, TUFE on system integration. Subprogram six, offshore balance of plant, coordinated by John Olaf in uh, Norway. Arno in Germany is coordinating structures, materials, and components. And Viveke from uh, Norway as well, uh, social, environmental, economic issues. And I'm coordinating this, uh, the full joint program, just for you to know who's who here. This is a little bit, we talk about a network of uh, research organizations in Europe. And of course, you can do 
different things. So you could say there are different levels of collaboration when you talk about a network. And we were, some time ago, we were putting some sort of scale from one to five in, in terms of what can you do. The first level is networking. Okay, you meet from time to time and you exchange information. We have been doing this very actively. So this is probably the most successful over the years. Then the second level, it is maybe some sort of harmonization. For example, um, defining together um, criteria, scientific criteria, validation cases for testing procedures. So it's a little bit more that you sit together and agree on certain common procedures in some areas, for example. Level three, it is joint strategy. So we define together what are the priorities, roadmaps, and so on. Level four could be this comprehensive structure, and I don't know exactly what is what was the purpose there, but it is more about actually taking the strategy and implementing it, doing something about that together. And then number five would be this management of, of common research programs where we have a joint vision and then everyone is working in a different area and actually everything comes together. And, and, and there are also a number of activities that we have done. This exchange of knowledge has been quite successful. Exchange of researchers, there have been some projects doing this. Collaboration with industry um, to some extent, but not that much. Uh, coordination of national projects, a little bit in some cases. Germany, Denmark, for example, has been there have been some cases. And then you could say more broader international collaboration. Well, okay, to some extent. It's more on the networking and exchange of information. But of course, there is a scope for doing all these things uh, much more, right? So in a, in a more collaborative and, and integrated way. So let's say the European Centre of Excellence, which could be the next step for the joint programme, would be this more strategic way of uh, working, of implementation. And you could say, why do we need this? So on one hand, I was saying we need to speed up. Uh, we all see these uh, political statements in uh, different countries, Europe and so on and so forth. So actually we need to go faster. This is one of the things. Another thing is that we need a longer term perspective and stable as well, right? So we cannot operate just with uh, one year or two years or three years and so on. So that's why we really want to take the long term. And this is all what is about New Win Era project. And then, yeah, more collaboration, not just exchange of information, but actually working together. So I mean, this, this phrase here is, is from John Olaf. It is actually is very big. Uh, and there are lots of resources that are going to be put into um, particularly offshore wind on, and, and more if you consider uh, onshore wind as well. So actually the resources justify this level of uh, collaboration. But if you want, the change here is to go from projects to a program. Where, where you don't take the individual project and then wait for another call in two years or whatever. No, actually you have a more integrated vision. And then what kind of vision? Well, it's a vision up to 2050, what we want to do here. So really long term. Um, and we are starting from this IA net zero by 2050, which is some sort of the reference uh, politically for all over the world when the countries make these uh, pledges, and, and you will hear later, I mean, these objectives by, by the countries refer to the net zero scenario by 2050. Um, and this is, <clears throat> I mean, this is a scenario that is defined by IEA. What we are doing here is, is to use this as a overall framework, take into account the European context, Repower EU has been the, is the policy for, for uh, European Commission up to 2030. Um, and then, transform this into some sort of a research program. So what does it mean, this kind of a statement, decarbonization with all these intermediate steps and so on for us as researchers? How can we make it happen from a research point of view? And then we need to take into account this lower layer here. Uh, this, the strategic research innovation agenda is a document that the industry is producing in collaboration with us, but it's only five years. So we are going to actually, uh, by the end of this year, have this uh, strategic research innovation agenda together with the long-term planning up to 2050. This is the first time it's done this way. And up to now, it has been only these small pieces. And then by the end of the five-year period, you do the next year period and the next five-year period and so on. So this is the first time that we are doing a long-term thing at the same time, right? And the aim here is, is actually to uh, really support these uh, green transition plans up to 2050, uh, basically providing research-based uh, solutions where there are gaps. And then 
yeah, you could say that the vision it is to enable these collaborative research projects with a co-funded research program. Actually, what we want is to bring more money into wind energy research. That's another big objective, right? We want to really scale up the level of activities significantly, more money into wind energy research. And then what we would like to do in the European Center of Excellence and is this program up to 2050, review it every year. Where are we? When you look at the existing projects, are the existing projects enough to answer all the challenges, for example, in floating wind? Yes or no? What is missing? Are we are all the existing projects on recycling, solving the problem of recycling of plates? Yes or no? And we will do this ourselves, not a consultant, but the research community. This is also um, part of the scope of this European Center of Excellence. We define the program and we monitor the program on an ongoing basis. This is what we would like to do. Uh, and then, of course, what we want is the European Commission to buy this thing and say, yes, this is something we will support directly by funding the, the activities of the center. So, as I mentioned, update the research program regularly and track the progress by monitoring key funded projects. We have a unique uh, position in the network of research organizations in Europe. We are the ones in the research projects. So we know what is going on. You know in your projects, you know total control, you know whatever. All the projects, yeah, in the beginning we wanted to do this, but at the end, well, we managed to do whatever, 75%, and there are still gaps here and there. This kind of assessment is the one we want to do in the European Center of Excellence. Then, of course, facilitate collaboration across Europe. How could this European Center of Excellence work? Well, at the end, what we have is an overarching big high-level program for uh, wind energy research up to 2050. And then there will be a number of topics. We have some examples here. It could be whatever, design for circularity, large scale integration. Whatever, some countries may choose to focus on some of these topics. For example, Norway want to focus on floating wind. And then they want to create some sort of a national node with a national program that we connect to this uh, type of high level uh, uh, research program for wind energy, right? Some other countries may only sponsor specific projects. But the point here is to put everything together, together, is to have an umbrella that really covers everything where we can go and, and check what is the status uh, and then do some sort of analysis. Is it enough? Do we need to put more effort here or should we move to the next thing? Uh, this kind of analysis. Some principles that we're going to follow to establish this center of excellence. I have to say that in, in, uh, in September, in our annual event and the joint program event in Amsterdam, we will sign an MOU, and I think we are like five or six organizations already signing. Uh, DTU, TNO, uh, Fraunhofer, uh, I don't know, yeah, Catapult and some others are going to sign saying we want to create this. So there is interest in, in really moving forward, right? We would like to include all joint program members, so it's kind of transition. Okay, here we are, joint program members, now we move into the European Center of Excellence and maybe some new ones. <clears throat> we would like to include all research topics. But of course, the point here is going to be, um, we'll have to put some timing. There are things that need to happen before and others need to happen later. So it's, it's not a kind of long list without any structure there. We really want to have a program somehow saying you need to do this before that uh, in order to achieve results. So some more intelligence is not just the collection of interest from all the organizations. And then, of course, at the end, we have to operate as we have been operating now with co-funded projects, so national um, funding, European funding, etc. But we want more. This is the idea. What we want is to say we need more research on wind energy. Uh, and also we need to fight against this idea that some people is having that uh, wind technology is mature. So we don't need to do more research. But what we want to fight it is not just by saying I don't agree, it's by putting a program on the table. And then the impact what we would like to do is to, of course, we're going to use this, uh, the result of the new wind era project to, uh, to visit the European Commission and some member states and actually make the case for further wind energy research, saying you need to keep focusing on wind energy research in these areas. And, uh, and also this state of research type of analysis uh, will be, I know the European Commission has tried several times actually uh, hiring external consultants to do this kind of analysis, a state of research somehow. Uh, and it is not that easy for someone that it is not inside of the project. You could be from outside, you read the project description and say, okay, this project is going to cover this, 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 and that. Yeah, but actually, 
if you are inside, you know if actually is enough or not. Uh, this is the, the kind of thing we want to do here. And then, of course, the way to sell this will be, hey, we want to, to maintain and, and develop this European leadership in green energy by enabling this effective coordination and collaboration. So it's, it's a lobby type of thing, but it's a lobby actually with know-how uh, and, and, and quite strong content, hopefully, right? But now let's focus for a moment on us. So um, now as DTU, we are part of the Research Alliance. Um, I'm putting a lot of time and effort into this together with some of, of our colleagues. Why, why this uh, is important for us and what does it mean? Well, on one hand, the first point I think is really important here. I know I've been talking to some of you that are uh, concerned about maybe the changing of focus from research from uh, the traditional, some of the traditional disciplines that were funded before to some other stuff. And of course it's true. There is a lot of competition and there are new areas that are receiving maybe more attention. Overall, wind energy, I think is, is at, I would say it's at risk if we don't make our case uh, strongly, right? So what we want to create is a tool to effectively influence the agenda. Actually persuade, saying if you don't do this, you will not achieve that. And, and these are actually the steps that are needed, right? So this means influence the European research agenda. And of course, we are doing uh, our own roadmaps here at DTU, which is the, the kind of a strategic thinking. When the overall program up to 2050 is there, of course, that will be a very relevant reference for us. So this is kind of the overall direction, right? Knowing, hey, we need to cover all these areas in the coming periods will be also a good input for us, will help to position our research, but also will help to position our research as a department, as a division, as a section, as an individual researcher. If you know that there is going to be a lot of focus on circularity, you may choose, especially maybe our, our young colleagues, to specialize there because there is going to be a kind of clear future. So I think it is also good uh, to really um, make choices about where you want to make contributions. And then, of course, I hope it will also help to facilitate some um, collaboration. Right. At the end, we will discuss. Um, let me check. I don't mute the phone. Um, the, the point here is projects should follow, right? Same. And also the umbrella of the pro of the center where we discuss a strategy, where we identify gaps. It is the natural framework to discuss the projects and the, and the proposals that will follow later. In terms of time, now I think. Maybe I lost them again. Can you hear me online still? Just to check. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, perfect. And then my last slide, the preliminary or well, the timeline, what we would like to do. Um, yeah, well, you could say this is an extended timeline. Uh, the joint program started in 2009. Um, and then, okay, let me let me focus here. The new Win era project started in April this year. And we are going to sign this uh, memorandum of understanding between uh, a number of research organizations in Europe to take the step of creating this European Center of Excellence. Then we will have this research roadmap up to 2050 by the end of the year. And then we uh, aim at starting this transition uh, starting from the beginning of next year. And then, OK, well, pff, we don't really know, but it is, uh, let's say that 2024, 2025 will be the consolidation of this uh, center. I'm perfectly honest with you. We are starting something that we don't know exactly where is it taking us, but what it is true now it is that it is, uh, there's a lot of momentum created here and there's a lot of interest. So um, let's, let's try to turn this into uh, positive outcomes. If you have questions, please bring them at the end. So now I give the floor to Jake. Good morning, everyone present here and online. I hope you can hear me well as well. Please speak up if you don't. So yes, Ignacio, thanks very much for the very nice context setting, um, the bigger umbrella of all of this. And I would like to use about 10 minutes of your time to, to talk a bit more in detail about the, the project itself, uh, diving in a little bit. Um, one thing I found about this, uh, well, I could also introduce myself. So I, my name is Jake Badger, and um, if you don't know me, I'm head of section for resource assessment and meteorology. And it, at the capacity I'm standing here now is as one of the sub-program coordinators in Era JP Wind. So um, yeah, I was going to say in my time of uh, having this role, 
I'm struck by actually the number of uh, acronyms and uh, jargon. So there's a lot of those, and I, I've got my handy uh, jargon buster here. But um, but I will also try to to explain some of these things to you if you, if it's new to you, also the the partners we have in the projects and so on. So um, all questions are welcome, even in the jargon. So yeah, so um, I would like to tell you more about this project that we have now underway and was detailed by one, two or three. Uh, of those dots on the timeline Ignacio showed. So now I want to just go a bit more in detail. So we have this uh, project called um, New Wind Era. It started in April and it is funded by, by the joint program. Um, so we will develop this uh, re strategic uh, research program um, for, yeah, for the benefit of the European wind energy uh, research uh, community. So what are we going to be doing? We're going, and I'll go more into this in, in depth, but we're going to look at these, these very ambitious um, milestones that have been laid out by a number of uh, different documents. And we want to compile those and say, what does it mean for wind energy? So we're going to identify the state of the art now and then re the gaps, and then try to put in uh, some kind of prioritization and timeline as we move out to 2050. So also Ignacio said, this is very important that we're, we're thinking of more longer term perspectives in this in this program uh, description. So the consortium that make up the, the project team is led by Ori Catapult. So that's the offshore renewable um, energy um, uh, catapult in the UK. Uh, it's led by Paul McKeever. And then in the consortium, we have uh, Sintef, which is a Norwegian independent research uh, institution, multidisciplinary. So excellent to have on board. We have uh, D2 Wind, that's us, I, I won't describe us further. We have CMAX in Spain, that's a public research body focusing on energy environment and technologies related to them. And then we have RWTH Aachen University in, in Germany, and we're working with the team uh, called Center for Wind Power Drives, um, called CWT, and that's an interdisciplinary research activity um, unit working in the field of wind turbines. So that's our team. So this is, it's kind of getting a good scope across the, the disciplines um, in wind energy research. So the way you can think of this project is break it up into five chapters. And that's actually literally what it is. And I, I have uh, two of the chapters here and we'll share those uh, the four distribution versions as PDF files. So you can get into them, read them and give us feedback. That's really, also part of the reason to have this seminar is to, to engage, engage you in the process. So chapter one, it looks at the implications of these ambitious milestones. What does it mean for wind energy? So for example, um, in the, what, yeah, what, is, what are these uh, targets demanding from wind energy community to, to reach them? So we've got the, um, the IA uh, net zero uh, document reports, and then we've also got Repower EU and uh, uh, it's very uh, also EU-based um, green transition uh, documents and targets. So in chapter one, those were uh, read and sort of analysed in, in with the optics of, of wind energy community, um, which ones are most kind of relevant for us to note. So it's interesting that we, it's, we need to have a broad input of these targets because they may have different flavours to them. So for example, the European one, is like, the, the headline target is to have the first continent that is uh, carbon neutral by 2050, for example. Whereas the IA one also goes into um, broad access to energy um, and also a just transition in the green energy transition. So those aspects need to, you know, it's good to have a broad input because then you can catch uh, different corners of, of this uh, need. So um, those already had a chapter one workshop on the 7th of July, um, so we've missed that. I think maybe it's recorded and there are minutes, so you can find them perhaps. Um, but uh, most importantly, we've also got the, uh, the actual output of that um, is this um, short document which outlines how the milestones fit into the uh, wind energy, um, how, it, how it puts demands on wind energy to achieve them. Okay, then chapter two, I also have this one uh, present. Um, so this is an analysis of the current state of the art and, and related research gaps. And it's very much feeding on the chapter one so it's saying these are the things that where, where there's a demand for wind energy in order to reach the milestones. And then chapter two sort of dives in a bit more and said, okay, where are we in that 
in that line? What what are the important um, research gaps to to follow up on? So yes, we have um, we have also you know this this isn't happening in isolation. There's been other initiatives working on this. So for example, we have the uh, grand challenges um, uh, exercise uh, going on, which has been very helpful for us also to to be sort of uh, using that as inspiration and also inputs. And, and several of us have been involved in that process too. So we have that. And then we also have, as Ignacio explained, the ETIP wins SRIA, and that is the strategic research and innovation agenda. So um, we can put all these things together, gain broad uh, set of inputs. So we try to get, we have no blind spots, hopefully. Um, so, so this this chapter uh, condenses all that, consolidates that, and, and puts it into a series of headings that will be, um, yeah, very, very, very relevant um, for the for the next steps. And that's what chapter three goes on to. But before I go to that, we had um, a workshop in um, beginning of August, third of August, and we've also got the the, the draft of the chapter here for uh, feedback to read and uh, uh, to let us know. So. Chapter three is underway now. I just left a meeting uh, before this one uh, where we were talking about how to put this together in more details. So in, in chapter three, it's about the taking the research themes um, that are coming out of chapter two and then just going more into description and also to provide um, timelines, prioritization, how do the different themes uh, have overlaps. Also, there's a cross cutting um, themes where we need to sort of be strong and, and aware of what's happening, say, for the environmental concerns and how that can be fed from information, say, coming from um, uh, met ocean conditions. So some of those things are overlapping. That's one I am aware of, of course, but there are many others also around digitalization and so on. Lots of overlapping areas to, to highlight. So um, this is an ongoing process, as I said. We've not uh, released that chapter yet. It's, it's very much in draft format and um, thinking about how to, how to put it together. Um, and we'll, in this process, be having an in-person workshop. So the other workshops have been online, but we think this is a, a very important topic to bring people together. So as part of the Innovation Forum in September, which is on the 11th, 12th and 13th in Amsterdam, we have um, a, a good time slot um, dedicated to this workshop on the 12th of September, that's day two. So um, here we hope to yeah, get a lot of inputs and uh, discussion going on this, this topic. So um, I believe there'll be an early version of the chapter ready to be read around the first week of uh, September. Moving on, chapter four is the, this is where we want to actually get to disseminate the information that we're gathering in very easy and uh, yeah, easy to understand um, to a whole range of stakeholders. So this will be a pictorial timeline representation of the research gaps, themes and actions. So here, um, as Ignacio mentioned, it's very important to bring this out beyond our community, of course, to say how important it is um, to the industry players, to the, um, the funding bodies to, to, to excite and uh, show that this is an, this is, these are project ideas or, or a program that needs to be funded in order to reach the milestones. Uh, it will also be yeah, different um, audience, trade associations, um, yeah, decision makers, of course. So this will be a nice uh, set of slides, you could say, things that we can all use in our, um, in our practice of, of, of saying how important the, um, the program and the research agenda is. Uh, so this will be a workshop around October um, or early November, and the chapter, of course, is not to release yet, but that would be part of the process of releasing it and getting feedback from, from you. And then chapter five is, um, is the start of actually a, a way of seeing what is the what are the current projects that are addressing those things already identified um, happening in, in the uh, in the European community, but also beyond that. Um, but we'll also be able to use that as, a, as something that up, is updated during the during the course of the, the program. Um, so this is just the beginning of a, of a sort of updating and uh, temperature checking of, of how the program is is uh, moving ahead. So uh, this will come in, um, we'll have a workshop on that in November or December 23, and the chapter is not yet uh, written. <laughs> so yeah, with that, um, I, I yeah, have given you hopefully an idea of the project structure, timeline, partners, um, and where we are in that process.